Hello guys, today we're going to take a look at version 4 of our little control board here. So we've adapted it now to I think it's the, the most user friendly version that we've had. So today I'm going to just show you through the different processes of getting set up. Just before we get started I do have uh, 5 complete uh, sets so um, if anyone's interested uh, send me through an email and uh, it'll be a kind of a first come first serve kind of thing. So. Uh, first person to email in I'll let you know the price and if you're happy enough to continue um, it'll, you, you'll get it we'll say and then uh, after those five are gone I will be getting a few more in the future so um, you know we'll get around to getting them out to you as well so this board is actually very similar to the old one except I found that this little piece here was a bit awkward to use for programming it. So what I did was I extended the header and added all these pins into header on either side. So now we've just two rows of header. It makes it a little bit easier to control than this one was. was I found that uh, this was a little bit awkward for plugging in the FTDI cable. I even uh, I made this kind of little adapter thing for myself and uh, you know just wasn't simple. Uh, you're kind of plugging that in and plugging it into the other and everything's kind of shaking around a wee bit so I didn't think it was great but that gave me the idea to make this piece here so basically what this is there's your header you just get your FTDI cable you just plug it in here and then the program not that one this one you just plug it into the header hard to do around the camera but that's it just plug it in like that and then upload your program using uh, the Arduino IDE the same as you would to any other Arduino then just plug this board back out again and plug it into your tractor whichever one you you're using so I think that makes it much more user friendly than this old version and as well as that, when I was doing that other idea, I decided, well, I was messing around with uh, programming this. I had to, I had to program it before I soldered on the NRF module here, uh, because those pins didn't go anywhere else other than here. So I was programming it by kind of holding uh, wires or a kind of a header connection to this point and holding a reset pin and hit and go, and it was really awkward. So I took a few of those pins I needed for programming the Atmega chip out to the sides as well and made another little board like this so again just plug that in and when I want to program it all I have to do is have the Arduino uh, programmer or uh, well have an Arduino set up as a programmer and then I can just put this little shield on here plug in my board and hit program there's no messing about trying to hold the pins steady Everything's plugged in and it just works perfectly. So that was another very simple process. But this this board only really benefits me because I'd be uploading the uh, the Arduino IDE to each of the individual little controllers. When you get it, you don't need this. You just need the one that works on the FTDI cable. So you just need this one because you plug your FTDI cable in there. This I've already programmed with the Arduino IDE or the Arduino bootloader. So, if you plug it into your FDI, FTDI cable, it should just come up as an Arduino, um, an Arduino Mini or Pro Mini. So, just program it the same way you would program an Arduino Pro Mini. So, that's the programming end of it done, all very straightforward. So, when it comes to testing then, um, this is the board we generally try to use because it is... Uh, well just it's so small it'll fit into the little uh, tractors that we're trying to control or the little vehicles we're trying to control so I've changed that slightly the, those pins used to be on the outside and that left the board a little bit wider but because I put these extra pins I had to widen it out a little bit so I've put the pins in the center here it doesn't really matter you can run the wires in through the middle solder them from the bottom and then when you close this down in your vehicle all you have is just the 
wires coming out the back here to you know your motors or your servos whatever you want to do now, when I was doing the 118 scale or is it 116 scale truck it's this truck I'm talking about I made this little board here which basically took one of these motors and expanded it or these motor controlling boards and expanded it out to header pins that fit your standard like servo connections 2.54 millimeter so when I was redoing this one I decided to expand every pin out so here is the full uh, I suppose range of controls that you can get with one of these boards so we have two motor drivers uh, or control for two motors I mean those are uh, control pins for say RX and TX of your UART um, so you can expand to another chip if you want it then all the other pins are set up with ground uh, positive the, the VCC and actually no it's not VCC it's uh, direct power from the battery we'll say so there's a, a battery connection and this is all ground this is all positive of the battery and on the other side is all ground all positive of the battery then on the inside you have all your control pins so uh, most of them you could be able to use a servo and then you'd have plenty of pins then if you wanted to do LEDs or something so you might have you know ground of the LED and then the uh, positive was just going to the pin of the chip that you could turn on or off to turn the controls of your LED the other uh, benefit to this obviously enough is if you are getting ready to make a vehicle so maybe you know you need a steering servo and you need two motors and you have headlights and a whole go of different lights so before you get to the point where you have everything squashed into the model you could set it all up here with a breadboard or something you could just plug a motor in plug the two three servos the few leds whatever it was program your chip uh, so this guy program him with your code test it out here where it's easy to test out everything's big and easy to connect and disconnect so you can test everything out here and then when you're ready just unplug this and plug it into the model which is using this smaller one so you can imagine this is like a test one or it could be used for a big vehicle like this so no, you don't need to try and squash everything in using something like this if you have a big vehicle like this or for example a combine harvester or something where you have lots of space so it might be better to use something like this that you can easily connect and disconnect but even for testing it's an ideal scenario so if you wanted to buy this little kit what you'd get would be this little control module here so that's kind of the brain of everything that's the bit you program you know this little board just for programming this chip so that's fine then when you have it programmed you want to test your program you could use this bigger board here which you can hook up all your servos and all your LEDs test it out and then when you're ready to get it into a model wire this one into the model and then just plug it in because you've already tested using this one and you know that the codes are working perfectly so if you have this wired up properly it should be just a matter of plugging it in and that's it well that's enough talk let's make sure that this actually works so this was the setup you've seen in the last video of controlling this using uh, the version 3 module so here we have our new setup we've programmed the bootloader with this we've uploaded the sketch with the other board wherever that is the FDDI one and now all we need is this larger board because we don't need the smaller one because we've all this space so uh, we need our motor and I think it's this inner motor I think pin 8 is the top here that's what the servo was programmed to so let's do that uh, I don't know what the lights are programmed to it doesn't matter um, we'll forget about that so if I plug the power in here we should get power and I've got a basic controller here so this is working okay so our drive motor is reversed so let's just spin the motor around simple no soldering at all so that's forward right forward reverse 
left and right. So that's it. That is this board programmed to uh, number one vehicle. This is number one. Well, by default, it starts at number one. So this is be the way that I'd be sending it to you. We'll say. So if you upload your um, basic controller program that you can find on the RC Tractica website to your basic controller, this will already have this. But you'll need to change it to suit your vehicle because your servo uh, the steering is not necessarily straight. It's set up for this vehicle. But you'll probably want to change it for something else. Or if you're adding lights and stuff, this only has that one light. I'm not sure where it is, but uh, it's only one set of lights in there anyway, or programmed into it. So you'd have to make changes to the code anyway. But just using the uh, basic controller code, uh, it'll, out of the box, it'll just work straight away with this. So you can you can test this board straight away as soon as you get it. So that's all I wanted to cover on this little board. Uh, like I say, I have five of them. So if, uh, if anyone wants one, just email me. Uh, it'd be the first five, and I'll only send one set per person, just so that you know everyone gets a chance to have a set, or five people get a chance to have a set. There will be more of those coming. I have a few changes I want to make, and I'll have to order another batch. I usually order a batch of ten. So um, if you don't get it in the first five, you know I should be able to get them round to you at some stage um, in the near future. Well that's pretty much it for today so thanks very much for watching if you liked uh, the video make sure and give it a thumbs up and if you have any comments and suggestions as always let me know below the video but uh, that's pretty much it so thanks for watching.